You're creating a code that's going to take data from a spreadsheet, construct an HTML table with that data, and then send that as an email, an HTML email to an email address. In this example, we're going to be getting some data from a sheet going over to the sheet. So we've got a number of items here within the sheet. So let's set up uh, the sheet that we're going to be using. I'm just going to add in a header here just above. So we want to get the data that's sitting within this Google spreadsheet, and we're going to create a table. So first of all, let's go ahead and select the ID value for the sheet that we want to use. So selecting the ID, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a custom function. And then within the function, set up the ID. And so we want to get the data that's sitting within the spreadsheet. So now we're going to select the spreadsheet and we're going to use the sheet variable and then using the spreadsheet app service open by ID. And this is where we use the ID of the spreadsheet. And then we want to get a specific sheet. So get sheet by name. So this allows us to specify a string value for the name of the sheet that we want to select. So in this case, it's just called sheet one. I'm going to give it a more meaningful name. It'll just say users. So we're selecting that particular sheet within that sheet using the ID, a spreadsheet using the ID. So this will give us the sheet object. And you can double check to make sure that you do have the sheet object properly by logging it out within the logger. So if we run the logger, there's our sheet object within the log. So we know that we've got the sheet properly selected. And now we can go get the data that's sitting within the sheet. So let's uh, get all of the data from the sheet. And we can do that by selecting the sheet itself and then getting the data range. So this will select all of the active content that's within the current spreadsheet that we've selected. And then we can get those as values. So this is going to return back an array of values. And you can also output this into the log just to make sure that you do have it properly. So that's the array of values and each one of the rows is its own array and each one of the columns is the item within the arrays. So now that we've got that we can get the heading, so the header, and this is going to be separating out the data, just returning back that first item of data and then the rows for the rows of content we can use the data slice and we can slice it starting at zero or whatever index value that we want to slice it. So let's see what we've got now for the header. And then also let's uh, see what we've got now for the rows. And you can use any array methods that you do in JavaScript. So we see that for the header we've got the first and we need to actually slice at one if we want to get the slice of only the data from the users. So that gives us an array of the various items and then if we're just using the first that gives us the array of the first row of content. So that's the header information. So what we want to do is we want to construct an HTML table using the items that we have within the row. So let's start out and we're going to just create it as a string value, then creating a loop and using the for each. Then as we loop through the row, we also want to get the items. So we can do another for each here and this will select out the item values and as we iterate through we can update and add the items into the HTML string. So going through them and this is going to be each cell of data and then we return that back. So within the cells we're going to be updating the HTML code. So HTML will take the value and set up a new table row. And then as we loop through and we add to the HTML, we're going to set up a table cell. And then within each one of the table cells, we'll add in the cell of information. And then we can close off the table cells. So this is going to be starting to construct the HTML table. And then after the row has completed the iteration, we can close off the row. And then after we finish the table, we can then just add to it and add the closing tags for the table. So let's see what we've got now for the logger and we'll see what we've got for the HTML. So we've essentially constructed an HTML table 
from the content that's sitting there. So we just take a quick look and just make sure that we do have the table properly. And you can also divide it out using just the headers. So if you want to like use the table headers or the different rows of content, you can do those as well. So I'm just going to keep it at the data. So this is just going to be a simple plain HTML table. So we're not going to have any additional structure within the table. So next up, what we want to do is we want to select that HTML and we're going to email it out. So let's uh, get our email address. So this is the address that we're going to be sending it to. And maybe we'll just send it to ourselves. Of course, if you have an email address that you want to send it to, you can do that as well. But for demonstration purposes, we're going to take the email from the account that we're currently logged in. We're also going to need to have a subject for the email, a table. And we want to send the email as an HTML email. So we're going to be using the mail app service and send email. And we're sending it as an object. And for the objects, this is where we have the opportunity to add in the HTML object. So HTML and we've got the subject. So the subject is just whatever we've got for the subject of the email. And then the last part is where we've got the HTML body. And this is where we're sending all of the HTML code. So let's see what this looks like. And we're going to run the table maker. And then we go to our inbox. And there's our table of content. So that's coming from the HTML. So you can also add in some styling as well. And you can do just apply regular inline styling to apply a little bit more structure to the tables that are being created. So that will create that type of structure. If you want to have also some styling within each one of the cells, so you can do that as well. And I'll just make this one slightly lighter. And you can also generate this in HTML and then just do the structuring afterwards. So that's our table that we've created uh, directly live from the data that we have within the spreadsheet. So if we add in new content in here and we run the code again, that will add in a new table of data and that's what we're getting emailed out. And of course you can add to the HTML to add additional content into the email.